Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Siler Jordan and I am the natural born thriller. And it is good to be back here in SWF, the Siler Wrestling Federation. And you know what? It's not just good to be back here amongst the Thrillians, it's a bit of a surprise. It's a bit of a surprise that I'm back here because several months ago when I won the SWF Uprising World's Heavyweight Championship, when I held that belt over my head, when I became the face of the Uprising, well, shortly after, CM Puma, oh, I'm sorry, it's just Puma now, I'm sorry, because that's cool. No, because Puma couldn't handle it. He shut down SWF. He shuttered it up because he did what any man like him, I'm sorry, what any little boy like him, I'm sorry again, what any wussy little weasel would do, and that's take his ball and go home. And that's what Puma did when I won the championship, when I claimed the top spot in this company, like I always said I deserved. It's not a surprise, but what was a surprise is finding out that SWF was coming back. Finding out that I had been drafted to SWF first. Hmm. That was a surprise. So maybe it isn't just two letters that's changed about Puma. Maybe he's become a bit more of a man, or at least a little boy. He's upgraded ever so slightly towards being someone with a backbone, a spine, with a little bit of honor. And so I'm going to give CM Puma, sorry again, just Puma, a chance to redeem himself just a little bit, to come in this ring. Give me the brand new, minted, the beautiful SWF Lone Star Championship, as I am the true champion of SWF. Come into this ring, wrap that belt around my most deserving waist, proclaim me the first Lone Star Champion, and then apologize, not to me, but to the Thrillians for taking away the greatest entertainer in the history of wrestling, nay, the world, nay, the universe, nay, every universe. This is his opportunity, his opportunity to redeem himself just a little bit. And so, Puma, come on down here, if you're not too yellow, and bring me what I deserve. Tyler Jordan. Nobody calls me yellow. Now, what you're saying is in fact true. SWF ran into a bit of a rough patch, and it just so happened to be right after you won the Uprising Heavyweight Championship. Now, don't forget, while we have our differences, obviously, it was me who put you on Uprising, 
after a trade with Jackson Montgomery. And it was me who invented Uprising to begin with. See, Siler Jordan, while we have ob our obvious differences, you are what has been said millions, and if I can steal this from you trillions of times, is that you are best for business. And unfortunately, the board and, you know, life thrives on what's best. So you were moved to Uprising where you dominated and became that SWF Uprising Heavyweight Champion. And again, we ran into a bit of a rough patch where we did have to shutter the doors as you have uh, previously mentioned now one thing is not true no one took their ball and went home now it's been quite the opposite while we did have to shutter the doors i've been working tirelessly to get those doors back open and while we still are swf southern wrestling federation rebellion is no more Uprising is no more, and we are now under the umbrella of shootout. And you're right again. There is another newly minted Lone Star Championship where you are, of course, the rightful owner of that championship. But as you can see, I didn't bring it with me. I will not be the one to hand you that championship. You will have to go to the championship board to receive that. Now, while success in other federations and other companies is a great thing that means nothing here in SWF if you want to know for sure ask Ryan Riley who was without a shadow of a doubt dominant elsewhere but seemed to not have a grip on things here in SWF so you may be an AOA champion you may be the WIW European champion you may have won the road to glory and multiple tag team championship reigns. And you may be the longest reigning GCW undisputed world heavyweight champion. But you've given yourself this nickname, the grand champion of wrestling. And well, I've got to say, I hate, well I don't hate, I love to disagree with you there. So while you are the lone star, the grandfathered in Lone Star Champion here in SWF. The tournament of all tournaments begins tonight. And the winner, of course, gets a shot at you in that Lone Star Championship coming up at the pay-per-view in a couple of weeks. So, without further ado, get the hell out of my ring and let's get on with the show. Welcome everybody to SWF. We are back with a new season and a new show. That is right, Rebellion is no more and Uprising is no more. As you heard, the wonderful, if you can see me rolling my eyes, Siler Jordan talking about Uprising. We are now a smaller show and we now have a smaller roster. Just one show and that is gonna help us keep production costs down and keep you guys in the seats and not having three hour shows. So to start this off, this is episode number one of Shootout. SWF has gone wild, folks, to the Wild West, in fact. And we're gonna start episode number one here of Shootout with an eight man over the top battle royal. I am so excited to get this thing going. And we've got quite a few matches here tonight. We've got some tournament matches. Now, Siler Jordan technically is the champion of Shootout. But 
he is not going to go uncontested, that's for sure. What's going to happen here tonight? We're going to have a handful of Lone Star tournament matches. That's right, our main title is now the Lone Star Championship. And our mid-card title, which these eight gentlemen are going to be fighting for, the Maverick Championship, currently held by Seb Abbott, as he was our television champion uh, previously. Our internet champion did not come back to SWF, and we wish him all the luck in his future endeavors. But SWF Lone Star champion is Siler Jordan. The SWF Maverick champion is Seb Abbott. We're gonna have an eight-man battle royal here. Battle royal here, excuse me. And we're gonna have these eight guys coming in. I'm always excited for a new season, as a new season brings new opportunities for quite a few people. Uh, some people I'm excited to see some of these things for. Um, Hunter King, Omari Williams, Brett Storm, who somehow morphed into Morpheus all that. Leo McKay, Duke Zenda, you guys saw the the roster reveal. We're pumped to have all of these guys back with us. We've got some newcomers though as well in um, Elliot Collins and John the Ro or Rob the Savage and Zach Graves coming way back a couple of years ago, he is back as well. Eight men coming out right now. We've got Jay Wolf, Malcolm Black, this man Hunter King, Lance Romance, Lord Draven, Elliot Collins, Amari Williams, and James Gaines III. All of these guys are going to be battling it out in this opening matchup here, in, here on Shootout. They're going to be battling for the a spot in the Maverick championship matchup here this, I'm, this is insane I'm so pumped number one contender for the Maverick championship and we bring Lance Romance here a couple of years he's been in it here in SWF a lot of these people um, have all been in here I wanted to keep this roster small this year I wanted to keep people that were active um, and who, who enjoyed being a part of SWF um, some of the new people, like I said, Zach Graves from a couple of years back, he's now here. Um, we've got James Frost, super pumped to see what James Frost can do. Elliot Collins, uh, Rob the Savage, we've got a lot of new folks here. But this man has shut off all the lights. Can't even see the hand in front of my face right now. and that. That can only mean that's Lord Draven, I'm assuming. As dark as it, as it is in here. This could be anybody, for crying out loud. As long as Siler Jordan stays in the back, I'm fine with it. He comes out here and he calls me Yella. And you know, nobody calls me Yella. Nobody calls me Chicken. I don't think so. And we had our beef. We had our beef last season. So much so that Siler went over to Uprising. Uh, with a in a trade Where he ended up winning that uprising championship, so he uh, Took over the internet championship um, and In a stroke of genius You know I had to stack the card against him at capital punishment. I believe it was capital combat and uh, Luke Now I can't remember his name anyway he, uh, Luke Luger, there it is. He came in that that uh, elimination chamber and, and pretty much stole that championship away. Uh, his brother actually defeated Siler Jordan, kicking him out of that matchup, so we were guaranteed a new champion. And Luke Luger comes in and wins. And Luke, unfortunately, wasn't able to return here to SWF uh, this season, and so the internet championship is no more, only leaving that television championship, which is now the Maverick championship. How many times can you say championship? So, Lord Draven in the ring. Here is one of our newcomers here, Elliot Collins. I'm excited to see what these new guys can do here in SWF. 
You know, we've all we've had the same uh, bunch of folks as of late in the last couple of seasons, but the New Jersey Saint right here, Elliot Collins, is one of those new faces. Let's see what he's going to be able to do here in this eight-man battle royal because you got Jay Wolf, who's humongous. You got Malcolm Black, who's he's the craziest bastard on our roster, I think. You've got this man, Omari Williams, who's tearing up the scene right now. So who, who knows what's going to happen here in, at Shootout here, opening up this show. And as you can see, we're not letting all these guys get all the way down to the ring totally before letting the next one come down. There's eight of these fools. It's too many. It's too much to sit here and watch everybody make their own little entrance. Amari Williams is making his way out behind the curtain, out onto the stage. The man, like I said, has been tearing up the indie, or excuse me, I say indie scene. Tearing up the scene, we'll just say the scene. And I'm excited to see what he's learned, because if you're not, uh, if you're not, don't know, Amari Williams got his first ever start here in SWF. Since then, he's gone on to multiple promotions and won championships and won big matches. So I am, uh, I'm very excited to see what's in store for Omari Williams. And finally, one of the three members of the Sons of Carnage. This is James Gaines III. The other two members are Ryan Riley and Jesse Newman. So they're not accompanying James out right now. There's already too many folks out here. So let's just keep the numbers low. Let's keep them down. And we're going to start this thing off. As you can see, we've got a whole new arena, a whole new ring. I'm super excited about that. We had a designer come in and clean up our image, if you will. So here we go. Eight men in this ring. Lots of craziness going on. And Malcolm Black almost goes over, but Lance or excuse me, but he reverses Lance Romance. And Amari Williams and James Gaines going at it. You got Lord Draven and Jay Wolf, who, oh man, he just pushed Draven straight down to the mat. Hunter King coming in like a wrecking ball, taking out everybody. And who is going to be the first man eliminated? I'm very interested to see who it might be. And there, go oh man, Malcolm Black pulls himself back in. Lance Romance went for that clothesline, and Malcolm saved himself by hanging onto the top rope. Jeez Louise, that was close, very close. Lots of people in this ring, and a huge clump right there. Lots of chaos going on, and look at that. If I'm not mistaken, that was Elliot Collins, the newcomer, first man eliminated. We are down to seven, and look, Amari is oh, oh no he's pulling to pull himself back in draven trying to get wolf out hunter king trying to get gains out and lance eliminates amari williams wow holy cow two eliminations fairly quickly i can i should say jay smashing lance down to the mat malcolm getting back up to his feet but not before draven runs those forearms across his face look at jay my goodness lance tossed across the ring my god and that po running power bomb that is insanity james gaines clearly the smallest guy in this in this matchup and wolf he's gonna go right after him put him up against the ropes uh oh well, he's got him set up power bomb position malcolm black stays in but james gaines oh my god he's been eliminated by jay wolf huge power bomb Hunter King able to stay in with Lance. We are down to five. Wolf just throws Draven down to the mat, and Malcolm Black's taking the opportunity to pander to the crowd. Wolf looking for a big clothesline, but Draven stops it. Oh, boy. Jeez, and Hunter King slams Lance down to the mat. It's just too, much, too many people in the ring still. Too many people in the ring. Wolf and Black going at it. Look at that nice neck breaker there from Hunter King. And Jay Wolf showing off the strength. Drops Malcolm Black right across his chest. Face first into the mat. King's going to come and pick up the pieces. Oh, Black's not having it, though. Look at this. 
Black's gonna pick him up. Nope. Reverse and a reverse DDT. Into the corner goes Jay. Not the greatest place you want to be. Lance going to town on him though. Hunter King now. What's he got planned? Sends Malcolm Black into the corner. And just look at this. He, oh man, clothesline. Out goes Malcolm, Bl Malcolm Black. We are down to four. Lance, Romance, Lord Draven. Oh, Jay Wolf took, he just went face first into that turnbuckle and came up like the Terminator. Draven now taking on Wolf King, going after Lance. Kick to the midsection now. Huge clothesline sends Lance over the top rope. What a move there by Hunter King. Three men left now. Jay's not going to jump up right away. He's going to take his time, catch his breath. Very smart move there from Jay. And Draven driven down to the mat using the top rope is Hunter King. My goodness. Oh boy, here come, look at, look at Hunter King. What's he doing now? He's got him hooked up. Oh, Lance slowly making his way to the back. Look at this. It, oh, over the top rope, but he's able to hang on. And look at this. These guys are going to team up to try and eliminate Draven, and they do. Draven has been eliminated, and it is now Hunter King and the humongous and massive Jay Wolf, they take a few steps back to size up their, each other, see what they're going to do here. Oh, reversal by King. Oh! Tried to do a maneuver off the ropes there, and Wolf picks him up and drops him with a headbutt. King now in the corner. Over the top rope goes King. And ladies and gentlemen, Jay Wolf is your winner of this eight-man battle royal. Now we will have another battle royal for another uh, second spot here in this number one contender Maverick Championship. And those are gonna consist of Bre Bruiser Brad, Jesse Newman, Evelyn Reeves, Brett Storm, and then the first four people who get eliminated from tonight's Lone Star Championship tournament match. So we have four of those they're coming up right now. Jay Wolf, ladies and gentlemen, is your winner of that eight-man battle royal. Now coming up, these fans, they stand up to their feet, but they quickly sit down there. We, what are we doing? Are we doing the wave? Are we doing the wave, guys? Here we go, folks. In our second matchup of the evening. You hear the music. You see these fans get fired up. The lights circling around the arena. Now we just saw James Gaines come out. And he quickly comes right back out. Ryan Riley to the left. Jesse Newman to the right. This is the Sons of Carnage, ladies and gentlemen. And this is the first matchup in the Lone Star Championship Tournament. You see he's gonna head all the way to the end and face Siler Jordan at the pay-per-view. Good shot at that Lone Star Championship. Now this match is, doesn't involve James Gaines there in the front. This match doesn't involve James, Jesse Newman there to the right. This matchup involves Ryan Riley. He is gonna get his, his shot at the Lone Star Championship. Now, last season, Ryan Riley didn't have the greatest go. He was losing a lot of matches. He even teamed up with Lance Romance at one point. But even as a tag team, they had their issues. Well, we take a break. A new season is upon us. And we're going to see what Ryan Riley can do here this year. Jesse Newman there coming in to the ring. Fist bump to Riley. As all three men enter the ring. Jesse Newman and James Gaines are the tag team of Sons of Carnage. But they're going to be on the outside waiting for Ryan Riley. They're going to be on the outside cheering him on, being a support structure, whatever you want to call it. They will be ringside for this matchup. Now, Ryan Riley's opponent is no slouch along 
with the rest of this person's team. So Ryan Riley's not going to be the only one to have teammates ringside. We're going to even out the odds here. Things are going to be even. While it is a one-on-one -on -one matchup, both gentlemen will have two people in their corner. We see them. Sons of Carnage gearing up. Not all three men. Ryan Riley now in the ring. Jesse Newman and James Gaines the third are outside the ring. And the familiar music hits the speakers and out on the stage comes Mason Foster and the Fallen Kingdom, ladies and gentlemen. There's Bruiser Brad. There's Malcolm Black, as we saw earlier tonight. Mason Foster is going to be the one taking on Ryan Riley tonight. While Mason, or excuse me, while Malcolm Black and Bruiser Brad sit outside the ring to make sure the Sons of Carnage don't take advantage of Mason Foster in any way. And Jesse Newman and James Gaines are going to do the same to make sure the Fallen Kingdom doesn't take any kind of advantage over Ryan Riley. It's all about numbers and it's all about evening the odds. That's what that's what we're doing here tonight. We're making sure no one man gets the upper hand over another unfairly. Now, what happens when the bell rings and these two men are in this ring by themselves is anybody's guess. Whatever happens, happens. But we're going to try and make sure that the Fallen Kingdom and the Sons of Carnage just don't start any trouble. The ominous looking Bruiser Brad. Last season, Bruiser Brad and Jay Wolf had a issue with each other, being the two biggest men in SWF at the time. It's only natural that they would go after each other. Mason Foster on the right, Ryan Riley on the left, and Mason's going to start things off with a kick. And look at this. Oh, man, what a knee breaker that was. He folded those knees in front of him and sat down, my goodness, and quickly dragging screw, going after the knees. Very smart on Mason Foster. Start hard, start fast, go after one of those extremities, and holy Toledo. What a move there by Riley. And bending that arm across his shoulder as Foster ducks down. Oh, and they smash into each other, but he goes after the legs again. Look at this. My goodness. Foster, he's got a game plan here. Look at that drop, front drop kick right to the knee. And he's going to quickly go for the pin here. One, no, just a one count. Foster has got a plan, and boys and girls, he is sticking to it. Riley now. Look, oh, that is not a place you want to be. Holy cow. Insiguri followed up by Hurricane Rana. Oh, Foster now sends Jesse across the ring, or excuse me, across the area there. Foster in no man's lane. You don't want to be over there. He's going to get Riley back into the ring and come back in before Gaines, or excuse, before Gaines can get him, yeah, but before Newman can come back. And Riley, big knee to the face now. Oh, Foster with the block and a huge left. Oh, going for those, dear God. He's damn near broke his neck. My goodness, he almost broke Foster's neck, and now what is he bending him up like a pretzel? Look at this, he's stuck. He can't get out. Oh, that might have been a low blow. Might have caught the taint there a tad, and he kicks the legs out from underneath Riley. Quickly, though, picks Riley up. Look at this. Oh, man, huge slide slam. And Foster... Taunting off to the crowd, but kick to the chest. Foster's game plan to keep Riley injured in the, in the legs seems to be working. The guy can't stand up, the guy can't win. That's pretty much how that's going to go. Now, Foster with a headlock chokehold there on Riley, just completely cranking down on it. Riley, though, looks to be getting up yes and he hits him two shots to the midsection he's gonna follow it up fireman's carry here look at this again over the top rope my goodness 
But Foster is able to kick out of it. Foster and that top rope are gonna are having some issues right now. Look at this. Ref, get him out of there. Get him out of there. Jesse Newman distracts Foster and he catches a dragon suplex for his troubles. My goodness. Shot to the back. Look at this. Oh man. Goes for the pin. One. No. Just a one count. Wow. And now, Riley gearing up, getting Foster up to his feet. What a spear that was. And again, going for the pin. Two. And just a two count. Interesting. Ro Ryan Riley throwing everything he's got at him. Regal plexes, spears. It doesn't seem to be working. So now, oof, huge knee right across the elbow area. Foster quickly back up to his feet though. <clears throat> Into the coal, man, double knees to the back. That hurts as it is, but when you're chest first against the ring, ring uh, corner, that is not a good feeling. Nice Japanese arm drag there from Riley, and he goes for a low drop kick but misses, and Foster takes advantage. Look at this. Oh man, double arm DDT. What a, that might be the end of it here. No, Riley kicks out at two. That was a very nice sequence. It looked like uh, Foster might have been going for a roll up. Hits the double arm DDT instead. Oh, Riley getting wild in the ring, doing backflips and taking people down. Into the headlock, look at that headlock handstand. Headstand, I should say. Riley now is Foster up to his feet and a huge, huge elbow. James Gaines is fired up on the outside. And again, Riley's gonna set Mason Foster up. And he's saying, this is your leader kingdom, bam! Right in the chode, oh man. Riley's got Foster up and a huge kick, no! Riley stops the spinning kick to the head, that could have done it for Ryan Riley, but Foster stops it, sends him down to a, with a dragon screw, and drops the leg across the knee. Nice move there. Foster very aware of his surroundings and what's going on here. Using the top rope and sends Riley backwards. Foster not laying off of Riley. Uh-oh. DDT, go oh geez, spiked him. Foster looked to be going after Riley's legs. Oh man. Huge knee across the face. And now Riley goes for the pin. One, two, no. Just the two count. Riley's got Foster back up. He says, come on, no. Oh my goodness. Takes the legs out uh, from underneath Foster. He played right into Riley's hands on that one and doesn't block the spinning kick that time. Right to the face. One, two, wow. Foster is not giving up that easily. Ryan Riley though, quick. Oh, and there's the spear. That's gotta be it. That's gotta be it. One, two, and it is Malcolm Black on the outside trying to will his teammate back up to his feet, but it was just a little too late. Ryan Riley gets the victory over Mason Foster. That huge spinning kick to the face, following it up by a big spear. And what's Riley doing now? Ryan Riley attacks Foster. It's only natural that the Sons of Carnage and the Fallen Kingdom go after each other. But Ryan Riley is trying to cement that rivalry in stone for sure. Making his way down to the ring in the second matchup of this Lone Star Tournament. It is none other than the smallest bruiser, Leo McKay. Now last season, Leo McKay had a hell of a battle with Vice. These two guys, Vice and Leo, were really taking it to each other. And I believe Leo got the upper hand at that. On the outside, over there by 
the ramp took it. These those guys put on a hell of a match. Leo McKay, five star superstar for sure. He is ready to go. Taking on his opponent tonight. Leo McKay always in uh, some sort of title run here in SWF. Some sort of title hunt, I should say. Uh, but he always seems to come up a little short. We're going to see if that's the case here. My goodness, he's an animal. He's a wolverine. He's a grizzly bear in a wolverine's body. I don't know what I'm saying. He is a beast and a hellion to deal with, that is for sure. These fans cranked up for Leo McKay. Or they're just ready. They're just ready for the rain. Here comes Leo McKay's opponent. Money is power. The founder of Money Inc., Duke Zenda. And they may just be ready for the raining of the of these dollar bills coming from the ceiling here. He is fired up. Oh, one landed in my lap here. Look. Dear God, these are million dollar bills and they've got Duke Zinda's face on them. This is ridiculous. People, please, don't try to spin this currency. You will be put in jail for sure. You will be absolutely put in jail. Duke dropping million dollar bills from the rafters with his face on them. This is insanity. He is ready to go. Another, another one of those gentlemen that are is always in the title hunt, but always seems to come up short. Who's gonna take the victory? Duke Zenda, baby! Who's gonna take the victory here tonight? Out of these two guys. I mean, it can be either one for sure. But let's get this match started. Leo McKay is cranked. Duke Zenda with the look of determination. Ref rings that bell. They meet in the center of the ring, and Duke's going to start things off with a stalling suplex as Leo went for a mid midsection kick. Look at this. Neck breaker by Duke and a kick to the back. Duke's got a size advantage over Leo McKay, but I believe Leo's a, a little bit faster. Dear Lord, sending Duke all the way out to the floor. That was insanity. That was a huge clothesline for such a little guy. Leo McKay, being as small as he is, is honey badger. Boy, he don't quit. That's for sure. But, as you saw right there, may not always have the strength to perform some things. But his punches, his kicks, his reflexes, they're, they're fast, boy. They're lightning quick. And he knows how to use them. Duke sidesteps that, though, and catches a punch. But Leo... Spin kick right to the face, right to the money maker of Duke Zinda. The ref counting almost, counting these gentlemen out. Leo McKay stomping down onto the mat now. We want to take this opportunity to mention our sponsor here for Shootout, and that is Hot Tag Pins. You got any wrestling lapel pin needs? Head over to hottagpins.bigcartel.com. They've got a, a decent selection over there. Just recently released an Eddie Guerrero two inch belt pin. It is fantastic, it's beautiful, it's got diamonds on it. Enough about that, Leo McKay going for the pin in a one count. My goodness. And a drop kick right to the base of the neck. That could have severed the, the spine right there right under, right above the shoulders, right underneath his hairline there. My goodness, Duke, though. Look at Duke. Oh, oh, man. Look at that. Leo McKay trying to get out of it, and Duke just putting all of his weight on that knee. Uh-oh. Leo saying, don't do... Oh, he's stomping on his hand. Usually we see elbows and shoulders and midsections getting stomped and punched. Duke goes after the man's fingers. Man, that is some brutal shit right there. Elbows to the midsection. Duke didn't get to the ring, uh, the ring ropes fast enough. Oh, blocks a shot by Leo and goes for a single leg drop kick. Nice move there from Duke sending Leo down to the mat. 
He's going to quickly, though, pick up Leo and possibly attempt what he was trying to earlier, put him in, up against the ropes. Look at this camera angle. Big kick right to the cheek. Quickly picking up Leo. He's got him. Oh, man, Leo jumps over the top. There's the quickness, folks. There it is. German suplex. Holy cow. Nice move there by Leo in a nice reversal, jumping over the top. Hitting him with that German suplex. What's Leo doing here? Look at this. He's all the way across the ring and t yelling at Duke to get up to his feet. Leo looks somersault into a neck breaker. Hell of a move right there. And now Leo's calling him up once again. Kick to that midsection. Oh, geez. We've seen him put Vice away with this. Rolling the dice and going for the pin now. The ref slow to get down one, two, no, just a two count. Hammerlock, backdrop from Leo McKay. My goodness. And now he's on the offensive. Oh, look at that. Look at this, holy cow. Holding the wrist and uh, dropping an elbow across Duke's elbow. My goodness. Kick again to the midsection. Oh man. Twisting neck breaker there. And again, going right after Duke. Not wasting any, oh geez, any time. Nice back breaker though. And there's the stomp to the elbow. Elbows don't bend that way, that's for sure. But look at this. Now he's, you're gonna do it to me? I can do it right back. Look at, look at the brutality of that. You don't think the fingers, you don't think of attacking someone's fingers. You're stomping away on their fingers. If they can't grab you, they're gonna have a hard time. That's a, that's a good strategy by both men. But my goodness, the fingers. Holy Toledo, and what's Leo doing here? He's gonna drag Duke towards the center of the ring. Oh, we're about to see it again. We're about to see this again. Duke getting up to his feet. Leo, no. He steps back into the ring. Look at this. Oh, DDT, reverse DDT. That's a that's mind games by Leo. Okay. Calling Duke up again. Are we actually gonna see it? Diving in. Perfect execution. Neck breaker. And he's gonna quickly go down for the pin here. One, two, and Duke Zenda, my God, kicks out at the last second. Leo McKay is furious. Leo McKay is furious. And he's just gonna hook him up. Look at this. Single leg, Boston Crab. Leo McKay working it. My goodness, Duke, is he gonna be able to get out of it? The ref is right there in his face. Can he get out of this? And he looks like he's going to, and he's going to push Leo McKay off of him. Hooks him up. German suplex. And now Duke Senda not wasting any time. He wants to put this away. Shaking. Look at this. And there's the end right there. That's got to be it. He goes for the pin here. One, two, three. And Leo McKay has been eliminated by Duke Zenda here in this matchup. My gosh. Duke Zenda, baby. He is on his way to face Ryan Riley. Unless we do some shifting around, we start pulling some numbers, we do a random second round, we'll have to see what's in store. I think a random second round would be would be a pretty good idea. That way you don't know who to prepare for until the night. That's a good idea. I think we're gonna do that. Guys in the back, production team, write that down. Thank you. Now making his way to the ring in our co-main event. Look at this man. Ryan Adams has been a staple here in SWF. 
for two or three years, however long we've been doing this, Brian Adams has been there. He's going up against somebody else who has also been there. He's been there from the beginning, if not the first person to ever be a part of SWF. As Ryan Riley makes his way down to the ring, all the way from Detroit. This man, he's a monster. And he is no joke, win or lose. This man gives it his everything. And when you get his everything, you're gonna wish you had That's for sure. That's for sure. Look at this man, he's a monster. Hopping up into the ring apron, he's making his way now into the squared circle. And he knows. Soaking it in. His fans, for some reason, have somewhat of a distaste for Ryan Adams. I don't know why. The man is a fantastic in-ring competitor. Yes, Lord. But he's got a face. When I said Ryan Adams was a staple here in SWF, he's got a face the staple here in SWF. Making his way to the ring, ladies and gentlemen. This is Vice. Vice has been here from day one. When we were NXT, when we were PWA, when we were SWF, it didn't matter what we were called. Vice was there, and he's been there, and he's still here. He is not stepping down. Vice the greatest here to possibly claim what is rightfully his. He has held the championship. I believe in NXT, he won that, uh, he won the tournament there. And then came back. When the tournament was said and done at one point, the main event was a ladder match. And Vice came back and said, wait, 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 wait. That's mine. I'm taking it. And not only did Vice say that, but Vice made that match a triple threat ladder match and won that triple threat ladder match to hold the championship. Can he do it again? Can Vice make his way to the pay-per-view to face Siler Jordan? Since we're mixing up the second round, who knows who he's going to be facing? It could be Leo, uh, Duke Zenda. It could be Ryan Riley. It could be the winner of our next matchup. But right now, he's got to focus on Ryan Adams. And Ryan Adams says, Vi I can take this fool. I can take this dude. And he is damn sure going to try. In the center of the ring, Adams starts things off. Nice block, though, by Vice. And knocks him down with a big clothesline. Vice, a veteran here. And look at the just, oh, good Lord. Huge knees to the chest of Ryan Adams. Ryan back up to his feet, but Vice isn't going to let him get anything going here. Oh, nice job there. Going for a European uppercut. Ryan Adams dodges it. Double underhook suplex right there. Adams, oh. Vice pushes him off, and again, huge clothesline. Sending Adams down to the mat. And Adams, though, not having it. Big drop kick. Look how big Ryan Adams is. And he's able to get off his feet and plant his boots right into the chest of Vice. Down he goes. And oh my, a knee right to the jaw. Sending Vice down. And now he's going to work on Vice's arm. Look at this. Oh. That can dislocate his shoulder in a heartbeat. Oh, big clothesline, but he's not done. A second clothesline, picking him up. Three clotheslines. The trifecta of clotheslines there. And a jawbreaker. You don't need your arms to do a jawbreaker. Vice, look at that, pounding that elbow. This is king of clotheslines right here. The captain of clotheslines and a big Shot sends Ryan Adams down to the outside in front of the announce table. What's Vice doing here? Hammerlock, but oh! The point of Ryan Adams' elbow right into the face of Vice, and he goes in for a big chop, and Ryan Adams says, you're not counting me out, son. Back into the ring, and Vice lands the first punch, literally. Punch to the face, and a European uppercut. Adams doesn't get out of the way that time. 
He's going to drag. Oh, soccer style kick right to the midsection. And now, now what's he doing? Oh my God. Sinton right across the chest of Ryan Adams. One, no. Making Adams use up what energy he had left to kick out. And now Adams slides outside the ring. Oh, mind games here. Mind games here, but they don't work. Oh, man. Vice able to snag Adams from the outside. Look at that, dropping him hard. A big STO from Vice. As I said, Vice is a veteran here. Look at this. Oh, that might be it. The Blue Thunder Bomb. One, two. Oh, wow. Wow. The ref was just centimeters from that three count. And now, look at this. Oh, man, dropping the head right across his knee. Now Adams with the pin. One, two, no. And Adams is, what? You, you hit a hit man in his head enough times and get that bl vision all blurry. That's, that's how you win matches right there. Look at this. And, oh, my God, turning Vice inside out again for the pin. One, two, no. And Adams can't believe it. Ryan Adams, oh, looked like he might have been going up top. Oh, he is going up top. The big man. Way up. Oh, my goodness. Vice slides out of the way. Misses that elbow drop. Does Adams. And, and Vice looks to be taking advantage here. No. Adams pushes him away. Monkey flip. It looked like he was going for some sort of code breaker. Instead, he flips Vice over. Sends Vice into the corner now. Oh, Vice gets out of it fairly quickly. Elbow to the face. Kick to that midsection, doubling over Adams. Not a second time. Uh-oh. Look at this. Look at this. The lucky 13 that might be, or the lasso from El Paso. Not quite sure. Vice is able to work his way out of it. Just as Adams, though, gets up to his feet. Look at this. Pump handle. No, oh, man. Oh. <laughs> Vice feeling the effects as well. Big clothesline. A second clothesline. Ducks it. The king of clotheslines here. Tilt the world backbreaker. My goodness. And Ryan Adams is laid out. Uh oh. Oh, boy. Vice. Lining him up, and a big spear. Goes down for the pin, one, two, and that does it. Wow. Finishing off with a humongous spear from the corner. Vice takes the victory. I, I told you guys Ryan Adams was going to bring the house. And he did. Ryan playing mind games. You know, big drop kicks from a man his size. Missing elbow drops didn't help. And the man threw all he had into this matchup. But Vice still comes out the victor. Here's Leo McKay backstage coming in. Oh, that's Kid Hades. These guys are going at it in the backstage area. Kid Hades just planting Leo McKay here in the, oh my goodness, and Leo's busted open. What the hell was that? Can we get some information about what's going on back there? This is insanity. Kid Hades, after a hard fought match against Duke Zenda, a t he, Leo McKay gets attacked. He barely made it out of the backstage area. Oh my God, we need to get some more information about that. We have our main event here tonight. I'm still a little reeling from that attack, but we have newcomer James Frost making his way to the ring. This is our main event, and this is for the final spot of that Lone Star Championship Tournament. Now, we've seen Ryan Riley win, and we've seen Duke Zenda win, and we've just seen Vice win. James Frost, if he gets the victory here tonight, he doesn't know who he's going to be facing. 
admits not necessarily going to be Vice. We're flipping the script here. We're not doing tournaments the normal way. He could be facing anybody, any of those previous winners, if he wins tonight. But his opponent tonight, James Frost, is new here in the SWF. I'm excited to see what he brings to, to our company as he's brought in so much to the previous promotions he's a part of. I'm very excited to have him here. Now, James Frost's opponent is SDC, the hero, the real SDC here. Now, SDC was a part of SWF last season or the season before as a team with Dino D. Dino decided he was going to step away from the ring. And we obviously didn't uh, hold him back from doing so. If you want to leave the, the ring, you want to leave the business, that is you. We allow that to happen. We allow you to do that and venture off and do whatever it is you're going to do outside of wrestling. So SDC here, hero of wrestling, taking on... James Frost now in a singles matchup, as we see in a singles career here in SWF. We're going to see what happens, where this is going to take SDC. Is he going to take him to the Lone Star Championship, or is they going to send him to the back? And perhaps he's going to have to wait his turn again. We don't know. We've got SDC. We've got James Frost. These guys are battling it out tonight in the main event. Let's see who is going to come out on top. These fans and you people at home, get ready for a battle. James Frost, SDC. Let's get going. The bell rings, and these guys meet center of the ring. Frost, though, is going to start things off fast with a snap suplex and a kick right to the back. Oh, kick to the head, though. Look at this. A running Tilt a whirl, DDT, whatever you want to call that. My gosh. And that can disorient a guy fairly quickly. Nice dragon screw there from the Canadian. Oh, shot to the chest. And jawbreaker. Oh, look at that. What a move by Frost. It looked like STC was maybe going for a drop kick, but Frost caught it in midair. Nice calf kick there. Oof, European uppercut. And there's that, man, that drop kick into a backflip. That takes some athleticism right there. Frost doesn't let it happen again. Look at that, jeez Louise. Going for a clothesline is SDC. And Frost, beautiful ring awareness, hangs SDC out to dry over that top rope. My gosh. Big bicycle knee right to the chin. Oh. A nice little headbutt there to the shoulder of Frost there. And SDC talking a little trash, kicking Frost into the back. Midsection kick. Oh. And now he's going after that arm of clutch James Frost here. He's going to drag him out. Nope. Okay. Okay. Working that arm again. He might have a plan. Like Mason Frost working the legs of Ryan Riley, SDC might have a plan here for the arms of James Frost. Look at this, Falcon Arrow. Nice move there by the hero. And he's gonna let Frost ride around in pain for a little bit. The fans, look at this, getting behind SDC. Oh, big running kick right to the jaw. You see James holding his mouth as he busts it open there. Two. No. Frost is going to kick out. My goodness. He took a huge knee right to the face. Oh, shoulder block there. Doesn't look like Frost is busted open in any way, but my goodness. Here we go. Kick to the midsection. He's going to send SDC back. Pop up power bomb. Huge move from Frost. Two. No. Just a two count. These guys are putting it all on the line and early. 
They are going at each other fast and hard, and they are not going to stop until one of these men can't stand. Huge clothesline there. A second clothesline again. Oh, he stops the kick, and he kicks the leg out from under SDC. And now, look, he's going to bend it. Oh, shot to the elbow, and that hurts that wrist, too. That is a double impact move there. He's going to drag SDC out some. Big stomp to the chest. And a, no, misses the kick. Reversal again. My goodness, fast-paced action here in SWF. Nice move there from Frost, and he goes up top. Look at this, the quickness. And he goes up. Oh, my God, STC steps out of the way from that elbow. Super kick, super kick, and another backflip headbutt. The jaw could be dislocated of, from James Frost. Oh, jeez. Look at this. Knees right to the head. Come on, ref. You got to get in there and stop this. The man can't defend himself against those knees. They're not even allowed to do that in the UFC for crying out loud. Oh, sidesteps the knee, but SD, SDC, excuse me, doesn't let it bother him. Wow. Nice dragon suplex there. Quickly goes for the pin. One, two, three. Wow. Surprising. Missing the running knee and quickly going for that suplex has given SDC the victory. My goodness, we take a look here at the replay. Look at this. Big knee to the face of SD, or excuse me, of Frost, and the ref gets down for the count, but not enough to put Frost away. Frost even gets this pop-up powerbomb, and a little, little close to the ropes, a little close to the ropes, but SDC is able to kick out, and this might have been Frost's undoing right here. Missing that huge that flying elbow, and there's the suplex that put him away. My goodness. What a matchup between these two gentlemen. Holy cow. SDC, ladies and gentlemen, is your winner this evening. Thanks, everybody for joining us here tonight on Shootout. We hope to see you next time.